Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the First United Pentecostal Church in Ravenswood, West Virginia. We're bringing you this service today because we've had to uh, go from in-person worship to uh, our folks staying at home today just for a few services as a precaution. We've had several people that are sick, and we want to pray for them this morning. But we are going to have church. And church doesn't mean we can have church here or we can have church in your living room. It doesn't matter because the presence of God is wherever you are. And so we're going to have the power of God and believe God to minister to us today on this Sunday. The scripture says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works and are thy thoughts very deep. We're going to go before the Lord as we start this service today. We're going to begin with worship and with prayer. And as we pray today, as I've already mentioned, there's many folks that are not well, that are sick. We want to pray for them and ask God to touch them. But I especially want to mention today that we pray for the Hardbarger family at the passing of Brother Randy Hardbarger's mother. And so let's lift them up in prayer. And let's pray for this service, that God will anoint this service here and anoint you where you are. I don't know if you've got dressed for church today and you're sitting in your living room in your suit and, and, your, and your church clothes or whether you're still in your pajamas, but right now it doesn't matter. You can worship God how you are, where you are. So let's begin by praising and praying. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, we praise your mighty name as we come into the presence of God. We lift you up, O oh Lord, according to your wondrous works, according to your mighty power, according to your greatness, O oh God. We exalt you this day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed be the name of of the Lord. God, we pray today as we've gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, as we've gathered all across Jackson County, into Meigs County, into Wood County, Kanaw County, as Lord, we come in the name of Jesus, and we pray today your power and your presence wherever we are. Let the anointing of God rest upon every person watching today. Let God, every person be blessed in the power of God. And we pray for those that are sick today. I ask you to touch each one by the authority of your word, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak a word of faith. I command healing into their bodies. I command healing right now in the name of of Jesus. Let your hand be upon them even as we pray. Let healing virtue come in their body from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray God for those that are that are struggling in issues in their life, whether it's financial or personal or family. God, you're able to move on those situations and you're able to touch them. I lift up the heart about your family, God, and I ask you to minister to this precious family. God, that you would give them grace in the days ahead. And I know, Lord God, that, Lord, they're suffering the loss today and, and they're grieving, but God, be with them. Lord, be with them. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. So, Lord, be with them. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name. Oh, one more time. Let's give the Lord some praise. God, we worship your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How great is our God. Praise your great name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, Creator, you hold our hearts together. There's no one higher than you. Redeem Defender, our great and mighty Savior, there's no 
I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. 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 And I'm not turning back now. 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 So I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, right there in your home. Why don't you lift your hands to the Lord and let's praise him. Right there where you're at, let the Holy Ghost just minister to you. Let the presence of God come right there in your home. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. We glorify you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
today and you're not accustomed to worshiping the way that you see us worship you're more accustomed to a more traditional type of worship not as demonstrative as what you witness here well I encourage you just to go ahead in your way and worship God if you do it quietly worship God but if you take a step of faith and just reach out to him today there is a god that will meet you there is a god who will reach out right back to you and minister to you today if you've never received the baptism of the holy ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues god can fill you with the holy ghost right there in your home wherever you may be right now god can fill you with the holy ghost if you've never understood repentance, God can forgive you of your sins. Every sin you've ever committed, all you have to do is reach out to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of all my sins, every sin I've done. I'm telling you, it's that simple. When you come before God with simple faith and reach out to him, God is there to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. I want to thank this worship team. The, for the multimedia team that has come with us today, that's come here, so that we're able to have church on a Sunday, even though we're not sitting in the pews, even though we're not we're not in our Sunday school classes, and the normal bustle of activity that's going on around the church on a normal Sunday. It's not like that here today, but we will be back in person soon. So we want to. We want to encourage you as we get back in person to invite you personally to come and worship with us. Be with us. Let's worship God together in spirit and in truth. Amen. If we were in a normal worship service today, our usher would be coming. And we would worship the Lord in our giving. And in no way do we want to rob you of the blessing that comes when you give to the Lord. So we encourage you to uh, go and send in your tithe, your offering, your building fund, your missions giving, everything that you normally normally give. And if you're a guest and want to give into this ministry, then we encourage you to do it. There's always a blessing that comes with giving. So you are able to do that. And you can, the address and everything will be on the screen at the end of the service today. And you can send all of your offerings and your tithing and so forth uh, to uh, the church here and we'll make sure it gets to the right department and to the right place again thank you for being here thank you for joining us I feel God I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost here this group that's come out today we feel God in this place and I trust where you are you're feeling the same presence that we are feeling here I do have a message I want to bring today from the word of the Lord 
I feel like God has specifically laid this in my heart. I felt it for several days. And so I want to bring you this message and minister the word of the Lord to you. I want to start with two scriptures, one from the writings of the prophet Micah and the second one from the writings of the Dr. Luke. Micah, the seventh chapter and the seventh verse, just two verses. The Bible says, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the light, the Lord, shall be a light unto me. And then to the writings of Luke, Luke chapter 22, two verses here, verse 31 and verse 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Two scriptures. The one saying, when I fall, that's not the end of the story. I shall arise. And the second one, the Lord speaking to one of his disciples, telling him, Satan desires you. Satan pursues you. Do you understand that there is a constant battle in the spiritual realm for your soul? There is a constant battle and a fight that is, that is warring over you and your eternal destiny. I tell you today, the scripture reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober and be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There is a constant spiritual warfare for your soul. So my word to you today is simple, but it is powerful. My word to you today is only three words, and that is simply this. Never give up. Never give up. Our society is filled with people who are willing to quit. They're willing to throw in years of marriage in a divorce court. They're willing to walk away from careers and jobs. It's a, it's a sad state that our nation is in right now when it's very difficult to get someone to work because they've simply quit. They have quit on life. They have quit pursuing dreams. They have quit chasing it and trying to have and accomplish things in their life, they've quit. And our society is simply a, a group of people today that is willing to give up when it gets tough. They're willing to quit and stop when it gets a little hard and a little difficult. I want to remind somebody. I want to encourage somebody. I want to pick somebody up and put them back in the race. I want to put somebody back on a path today and tell you, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. The fact is, we every believer, every Christian is in a race. Every one of us is in a race. The race has started, and you're in it. The race is going on, and you have to decide whether you want to finish this race or you want to give up in the middle of the race. Let me tell somebody, you have run too far to turn back now. You have come too far to look back and to go back to what once was. You have walked away from the world, and you've turned your back on sin, but now there's something in you that you're willing to throw up the towel and go back. I want to encourage you. You. I want to pick you up. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to. I want to get a hold of your hand, and I'm willing to run with you. I'm willing to walk with you. I'm willing to go with you. I understand the race gets hard. I understand that there's difficult times, and there's times you want to quit. 
But I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't give up. We're too close to the coming of the Lord. Don't give up. We're too close to receiving our eternal reward. Don't give up. Let me put it this way. Let me quote somebody you may have heard of. Her name is Dolly Parton, and she makes this statement. Never stop trying and never try stopping. Never stop trying and never try stopping. Not every believer is in the race to win, and that's unfortunate. Not every believer is in the race to finish this race. Their eye is not on the prize. They've allowed themselves to get distracted by worldliness and carnality. They've allowed themselves to be pulled aside and become a victim of the devil's devices. I just want to pick you up today. I want to encourage you. I want you to brush off your knees. I want you to get up and say, I will not quit. I will not stop. I will not give up. The race is going on, and you've got to run to win. And you've got to give your best to the race. And you can't just be in the race. You've got to give your best to the race. One of our, the greatest leaders of our time, was Winston Churchill. If you've studied World War II history or British history or, or even North American history, his name is going to come up. As a child, he attended a preparatory school and graduated in the bottom third of his class. Not, he was not expected to accomplish very much in his life. He attended a university and later served with the British military in India and in Africa. And at the age of 65, he was elected to serve as Prime Minister of Great Britain. And it was during his time that he served, it was during World War II, and it seemed Great Britain would be defeated. They were being bombed constantly, building cities, being constantly bombarded by the enemy. And But much to the credit of this man, much to the credit of this one man, Winston Churchill, and his leadership, Britain rallied her forces and became victorious. And toward the close of his life, and near the end of his service as prime minister, Churchill accepted an invitation to speak at a graduating student body. The head of the institution told the graduating class that the greatest orator of their time was coming to speak at their graduation, and he advised them to take notes during his speech. The day came of the graduation, and the student body assembled, and there was great anticipation in the crowd. And Winston Churchill was given a very long and lengthy introduction. And they honored him for his accomplishment. And they honored him for his status as Prime Minister of Great Britain. And Winston Churchill stepped up to the podium. And when he stepped up there, he simply looked out of the, at the crowd. And he said these words, never give up. He was silent for a moment. And he said, never give up. And he looked at them one more time and he said, never, never, never give up. He turned around and he walked back to his seat and he sat down. The head of the university looked at him and he said, are you finished? Is that all you're going to say? And Winston Churchill looked back at him and he simply said, that's all they need to hear. Never give up. I'm telling the church, I know we've been pushed off the rails <coughs> a few times with this pandemic. I know that there have been times that we've wondered why in the world are we facing this and why is, is the church going through what it's going through right now because of the pandemic. But I tell you, it doesn't matter how bad the pandemic gets, don't give up. It doesn't matter how, how widespread COVID becomes, don't give up. It doesn't matter what the government does, don't give up. It doesn't matter what society does, don't give up. It doesn't doesn't matter what other church folk do. Uh, don't give up. Never, never, never give up. Never give up. The Bible is full of people. You read through the scripture, men and women that got discouraged in their life. 
men and women who questioned things and went through very difficult times. That's what I love about the Word of God. The Word of God is very honest with us. The Word of God doesn't sugarcoat what people go through. The Word of God doesn't try to paint some just rosy picture and everything's going to be just a bed, bed of flowers from here on and we're going to go to heaven floating on a cloud. No, the, the, the Word of God tells us that there's going to be time that we're going to be trapped at Red Seas. There's going to be times we're going to face walled cities that have to fall. There's going to be times that giants are going to step out in our path and we've got to step out on the field of battle and be willing to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and stand against the enemy. There's going to be temptations that's going to come, that's going to try to pull us aside. There's going to be moments that we're going to get discouraged. But we've got to understand that we can never, 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 never give up. One of the men that comes to mind very quickly to me is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the predecessor of the Messiah. He came preaching and preparing the way of the Lord. He was probably one of the most unorthodox preachers ever coming in camel's hair and honey in his beard. He was not the polished preacher that we expect preachers to be. He was not the evangelist that, that would walk in very polished and in a new press suit would step to a platform and be a great orator. John the Baptist preached in the desert. John the Baptist didn't come into the synagogues and preach in the religious area. He preached in the desert and people came to hear him. And he had a message, a message of power. Repent, repent, repent. He had a message that there comes one after me that is greater than I whose shoe latches I am not even worthy to lose. He had a message preparing the way for the Messiah and he did that. He preached. He was criticized for it. He was persecuted for it. Yet there would be lines for him to baptize one after the other after the other. There came a time that the disciples of John began to question because Jesus had come on the scene and his ministry was beginning and they went to John the Baptist and they said, Jesus is baptizing more than we are. They were upset that Jesus' was, his ministry was excelling while their ministry was not. And John the Baptist simply looked at them and he said, I must decrease so that he can increase. My ministry has, has done its time, and now it's time for the Messiah to step to the center stage. And he, he taught them that and instructed them in that way. But there also came a time John the Baptist had been arrested. He be, had been in prison, this powerful man who came preaching Make, the way, make straight the way and prepare the way of the Lord. This man who had baptized and baptized and baptized. This man who had knew and understood and he had even baptized Christ in the water. And he stood there and watched as the dove ascended. And he heard the words out of heaven. This is my beloved son of whom I am well pleased. John the Baptist had been, been witness to all of that. But there came a time as he said in a dark prison cell. There came a time in his life and in his ministry when he didn't understand why he had to sit in that prison. And he sent his disciples to Jesus. And he asked, his disciples went to the Lord and said, are you the one? Are you the one? John began to question what he had witnessed and question what he had seen. Are you the one? And, and his disciples went to Jesus. Do we look for another are you the one? And Jesus began at that hour, the Bible says, in Luke chapter 7, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. 
And in verse 22 of Luke 7, Jesus answered the disciples of John, and he said this, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. I've come to tell John today. I've come to tell John as somebody that's discouraged. You find yourself in a dark place in your life. <laughs> But I'm telling you, don't let the darkness stop you. Don't let the darkness hinder your faith. Don't let the darkness rob you of your joy and of your victory. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful today that God is still moving, that God through his great power is still moving. Just a couple weeks ago in this service, one of our precious saints came up into the prayer line and said that there was a test. They had She had a place on her forehead, and they were going to have to test it for cancer. She stood in that prayer line, and we pray, anointed her with oil like the Bible tells us to do, and we prayed the prayer of faith for her, and God touched her marvelously in that service service and she went to the doctor and the doctor said there's nothing of cancer about this this is not cancer I'm telling you God is still moving I gotta tell John there's miracles still happening there's things still going on God is still God never give up never give up Never give up. Don't let the enemy and don't let the pandemic rob you of your faith and rob you of your joy and rob you of your experience. Oh, somebody, let me pick you up today. Let me put you back in the race. Let me put you back on track. Let me put you back so that you can still walk the walk of faith. Never give up. Never give up. I realize there's times we get frustrated. I realize there's times we're not witnessing things like we want to see them happen. I'm reminded of Peter who fished all night long. Peter was an experienced fisherman. That's how he made his living. He, he, he would go out every day and, and he would catch fish and he would sell the fish and have, he supported his family. That was his profession. It was something he did, but he had been out all night long and he'd been fishing and they brought the boats in, and they were cleaning their nets, and they were getting ready to go home, and they were going to call it a day, and they had not caught one fish. He listened as Jesus taught that day, and there was something about what, something in, in the words that Jesus spoke that, that triggered faith in his heart, and Jesus told him, he said, I want you to cast your boat out, and I want you to throw down your net, and, and Peter said, Peter, Peter said, Lord, I've been fishing all night. But at your word, you know what he didn't say? He didn't say, you know what, Peter, go home. It'll, it'll be better another day. He didn't say, Peter, why don't you quit and find a new profession and go do something else because, you, as you can see, this is just not, not working for you. He, he didn't tell him to do that either. He didn't tell him, you need a new crew. Go find you a new crew. Go find somebody else. Go find somebody else to work in your boat. He didn't tell him to do that either. He said, launch out right now, Peter. Go back out. Take the net. Get your net and let's go out. And the Bible says that Peter threw down the net. And when he threw down the net, that he caught more fish. He needed help. He called, he called his crew out and said, I need you to come out and help me to bring this net in. He caught more fish. Never give up. You may be frustrated a few times, but never give up. Oh, there's missionaries that's been on the missionary field that's got discouraged. Never give up. There's your home missions pastors and pastors that are dealing and, and going through things in their church. Never give up. Never quit. Never quit because it's the one that runs the race that gets to the end, that gets the prize. You've got to never give up. There are times that we falter in our walk with God. I know there are times that our faith wanes and there are times that we, we deal with stuff and we face things that shake us up. We don't understand everything. Our family has been through a time such as that just in the past few weeks. Our, our, our church has gone through a difficult time in just the past few weeks. But I'm telling you, First United Pentecostal Church, don't give up. 
First United Pentecostal Church, don't give up. I'm telling you, no matter what, don't give up. There was a storm that the disciples were in. And they were out on the water and they were bailing for everything they could, trying to get the water out of the boat. And the Bible says that Jesus saw them in their toiling. He saw them in their struggle. He saw them in what they were dealing with. And the Bible says that he came walking on the water. And there was one man in that boat that said, Lord, bid me come to you. Let me also walk on the water. And Peter, the apostle, stepped out of that boat. And just as the Lord was doing, Peter walked on the water. Jesus told them, it is I, be not afraid. And he walked on the water. But at some point, Peter, before he took his next step, started looking not at Jesus, but at the storm. Not, not looking at the one that had bid him to come, but he started looking at the waves and the wind and all the rain and every all the reasons that he shouldn't be walking on the water. All of a sudden he started thinking, this doesn't make sense. I shouldn't be out here in a storm walking on the water. And the Bible says that he began to go down in the water at that time. He began to falter. His faith that got him out of the boat and put him on the water faltered and all of a sudden he was sinking. But Peter didn't try swimming on his own to get back in the boat. Peter didn't try to swim to land on his own. He didn't call out to the other disciples. He said, Lord, save me. He reached back out to God and God got him by the hand so now, Peter, I'm telling somebody, never give up. You may feel like you're drowning where you're at. Never give up. Your faith may have faltered a little bit, but never give up. you got to understand there's a race to run, and you're in it. There's a race to run, and you've got to make it through. God offers us a reason to never give up. God gives us a reason to never give up. Let me tell you something, First United Pentecostal Church. Let me tell you something, saint of God that's watching, or maybe you're watching for the first time. Never give up. There's a revival coming. Never give up. I haven't seen it yet, Brother Johnson. That's all right. It's in front of you. Never give up. If you'll keep going and you'll keep faithful, there is a revival. Folks, we got to have revival. <coughs> in 2022, we... <coughs> And we've got to have revival. We don't have a choice. It's a day in the hour we live. We've got to have revival. And there's a revival in front of us. I'm talking about grandchildren coming to God. I'm talking about backsliders coming back in the church and filling the pews. Oh, my God, we can't give up. Oh, there's a revival. There's drug addicts and there's alcoholics that are coming that are going to be crying out to God for deliverance. Never give up. There's people who's going to be baptized in the name of Jesus and their sins are going to be washed away. Never give up. There's victories in front of us. There's, there's the coming of the Lord. Lord, that's so close that's in front of us there's a mansion prepared for us there is a, a, seeing Jesus face to face all of this is in front of us but you can't give up never give up the Bible tells us be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And Paul says this, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall, weep, we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. If we don't give up, if we don't quit. Verse 10 says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men and especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. When nothing is sown, nothing is reaped. You don't sow you don't reap. I know there are some Christians who think 
if I just sit back and do nothing, it's going to be all right. When nothing is sown, nothing is reaped. No effort means no return. No effort is no return. The simple fact is nothing plus nothing is still nothing. Nothing plus nothing is still nothing. How many times does a farmer sow corn and get wheat? How many times do you sow wheat and you get soybeans? How many times do you sow soybeans and get alfalfa? You don't. You don't. What you sow is what you reap. And when you sow to the Spirit, you shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Whatever you do. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying keep sowing. Yeah, don't give up. Never give up. Keep plowing. Never give up. Keep sowing. Never give up. Keep planting. Never give up. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying keep witnessing. Keep witnessing. Keep living right. I don't care what the world does. Keep living right. Keep believing. Keep praying. Keep worshiping. Keep marching on. Never give up. Never give up. Don't quit church. Never give up. Don't quit living for God. Never give up. I close with this illustration. In 1972, NASA launched the Exploratory Space Station, Pioneer 10. i got to be honest with you. I don't even remember this, 1972, this happening. I don't remember NASA launching this, but as I was studying, I came across this. And according to a Time magazine written by Leon Jaroff, the satellite's primary mission was to reach Jupiter. Its primary mission was to photograph the planet and the moons and to bring data to Earth about Jupiter's magnetic field, radiation belts, and the atmosphere surrounding Jupiter. And scientists regarded this as a bold plan that at that time, no Earth satellite had ever gone beyond Mars. And they feared the asteroid belt would destroy the satellite before it could reach its target. But they made... They made the satellite. They made the probe, Pioneer 10. They didn't give up. To them, it looked almost like a futile task, but they didn't give up. Pioneer 10 accomplished its mission and actually much more. It went past the giant planet in November 1973, and Jupiter's gravity, the immense gravity, of Jupiter hurled Pioneer 10 at a higher rate of speed than the edge of the solar system. And at one billion miles from the sun, Pioneer 10 passed Saturn. At some two billion miles, it passed Uranus. Three billion miles passed Neptune. Pluto at almost four billion miles. miles. And by 1997, 25 years after it had been launched, Pioneer 10 was more than 6 billion miles from the sun. And despite that immense distance, Pioneer 10 continued to beam back radio signals to scientists on Earth. Perhaps what is the most remarkable thing about this according to Jeroff, is those signals came from an 8-watt transmitter. That 8-watt transmitter radiated about as much power as a bedroom nightlight. And this little satellite that could, this little satellite that was not qualified to do what it did. This little satellite that was designed, Pioneer 10, was designed with a lifespan of three years. They expected it to last three years, but it kept going, and it kept going, 
and by simple longevity, that 8-watt transmitter radio accomplished more than anybody thought it ever could. See, that's the way it is with you and I. When we serve God, when we get in the race, and when we get the attitude to never give up, God can work more through someone with eight-watt abilities than God can through somebody who quits. God can do more with somebody. God will never be able to do anything through your life if you quit. God will never be able to work in your life. You'll never be a part of the revival. You'll never be a part of what God is doing. You'll never be a part of the miraculous and the supernatural. You'll never move in the gifts of the Spirit. You will never witness what God has in store for you if you quit. So never stop trying and never try stopping. Never give up. Never give up. Mm. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel God speaking to men and women. I feel God speaking to young people. I feel God speaking into the hearts of people who are discouraged. I feel God speaking to folks that have got off track and you've kind of got waylaid somewhere, somehow. I'm preaching to you, my friend. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. God's got victories in your future. Never give up. You're part of the revival. Never give up. God can use you. Even if you're an AWAP transmitter, God can use you. Never give up. I want you wherever you are, get out of your chair. Get out of your lazy boy. Get off the couch. Get up from your kitchen chair right now. If you're able to stand, I want you to stand right there where you're at. I feel God right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Spirit of God, <coughs> of God ministering. And God speaking into the hearts of saints of God. Folks, there's great things. I feel such a moving of the Holy Ghost. There's great things. Greater things than these shall ye do, he said. Oh, I'm believing God right now for you. For you to be a part of what God is getting ready to do. Never give up. I want you to reach your hands up in the air. Right now in this sanctuary, we're already having an altar call. Their hands are already thrown up in the air because this word has sparked faith into the hearts of people. I want you to believe it and receive it right now. I want you to make up your mind. I will never stop trying, and I will never try stopping. I will never give up. I will never give up. I will never give up. Lord, we pray it right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray it in your mighty name, God. I pray you touch the heart of every person. Let there be a fresh anointing and a fresh faith fall right now in the homes and in the hearts of your people. Let a fresh faith right now move in their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, by the renewing of our mind, by the renewing of our mind, I come against the enemy that would try to sift us as wheat. I pray right now against every temptation and every sin that would easily beset us. I pray right now, oh God, a spirit of victory, an overcoming an overcoming spirit and an overcoming attitude in the heart of your people. Oh, that's right. Come on, my friend. Reach out. Let the Holy Ghost touch you. Let the Spirit of God touch you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't let the enemy sway you. Don't be distracted by false doctrines. Don't let people get you to question the experience you've had with God. That's it. Come on. Reach out. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost falling. I feel the Holy Ghost falling. I feel the Holy Ghost falling. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise you for this word. I praise you, God, for what you've done. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I give you the glory. I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the Bible says, He who hath begun a good work in you shall complete that work. I want you to believe God right now. You've made up your mind. You've determined in your heart, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to be straight. I'm not going to. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to raise the white flag. I'm going to run the race. I'm going to run the race. There's a reward at the end. I'm going to run the race. I'm going to witness the victories. I'm going to run the race. I'm going to be in the revival. I'm going to run the race. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of this Sunday service. I believe God has spoken to you. I believe God has touched you in Jesus' name. I believe it in Jesus' name. I want you to hold on to this today. I want you to grasp it with everything that you've got. I will tell you right now, our plan is on Wednesday night to have church in, our, in the sanctuary here at 7.30. We gather at 7 for prayer and 7.30 for church. So if you would like to join us, we invite you. Come and be a part of the First United Pentecostal Church in Ravenswood, West Virginia. The address will be on the screen in just a moment. If you need to send your offering in, if you've not been able to get your offering to the church, you are able to do that with the address that's on in just a moment. If you need to call in a prayer request, you can do that on the phone number that you will see also in just a moment. We are moving our business meeting. It was scheduled for this coming Wednesday. We will reschedule that for a later date. We'll let you know when that is going to happen, but we will be rescheduling our business meeting. That's a necessary thing that we have to do here at the church, so we will be rescheduling our business meeting coming up real soon, so you can look forward to that. Also, I want to remind you, we are in the middle of 30 days, prayer and fasting. Get your prayer cards out, First United Pentecostal Church, that he, make him known is our theme, make him known is our prayer focus for these 30 days. So be in prayer. We are on week four of our prayer journey this month. So be praying that prayer uh, this week as you're praying. Remember the fasting. We are fasting. You are chosen a fast that you have, it's a fast you've chosen for your own self and your walk with God. So remember 30 days of prayer and fasting. It ends on January the 31st, the last day, prayer and fasting. We will probably be rescheduling also our communion service because of the services we're missing. I will let you know more about that as the days ahead come. I love you very much. Thank you for being here. God bless you in Jesus' name.